Welcome everybody. Welcome to Vital Fire. I am Danielle Spears and today we're going to be talking about a very serious um, but common subject matter and that is spirit spouses. So again, welcome. We're going to be talking about spirit spouses today. Before we get started, I want to um, open up in prayer. So Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you for being with me. I thank you for being with us. I ask that during this time that you would just speak to your people and whatever it is that you want to say to them, let it just flow out of me. Let it be anointed. The words that I speak, let them carry your anointing because it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. So I just thank you that my words carry yoke breaking power. And I thank you that as your word goes forth, that your people are going to receive healing, deliverance, and freedom. That any strongholds that may um, even be in their lives, that they're going to be able to recognize them and that they're going to come down through the blood of Jesus. And in your name, in your precious name, Jesus, amen. And so today we're going to be talking about spirit spouses. So seven out of 10 people in the church have dealt with a spirit spouse. Okay, hold on, I'm trying to fix my screen. One second. And then if you want to put in the chat, if you ever need to, like, let me know something, I'll try to make sure that I'm looking down um, and checking it. Like if you can't hear me or if it's cutting out or if the music is too loud. I don't know why it's coming up like this. <laughs> okay. At any rate, I'm not going to waste time on it. So. We're, so seven out of 10 people in the church have dealt with a spirit spouse. What is a spirit spouse? Well, demons can come into people's dreams. This doesn't mean they entered into that person, but they can and they do come into people's dreams. Whether the person is a believer or a non-believer, whether they're a leader or a member of the congregation, whoever, it doesn't matter. Spirits have come into people's dreams and they would even speak to people in the night season. And some people might say, well, where do you see that? Where do you get that in the Bible? Do we see that in the Bible? We do see that in the Bible. And we're going to go to Job chapter four, verse 12 through 21. And I'll just wait a minute if you want to go there. In Job chapter 4, verse 12 through 21. And so this is Eliphaz, is he's speaking. To Job now and so this is what he has to say and he's recounting something that happened to him in the night season and it says in verse 12 now a word was brought to me stealthily cleverly my ear received the whisper of it so we have something that's bringing him a word and it's whispering it to him in the night season and then verse 13 it says amid thoughts from visions of the night so Thoughts and visions of the night. So he's dreaming. He's sleeping. This is in the night season. Amid thoughts from visions of the night, when deep sleep falls on men, dread came upon me and trembling, which made all my bones shake. How many of us know when the Lord speaks to us, 
we shouldn't be feeling dread. We shouldn't be in fear. We shouldn't be trembling. Those are not words from the Lord, but words from the enemy. A word from the Lord is not going to terrify you. He says, dread came upon me and trembling, which made all my bones shake. Verse 15, a spirit glided past my face. The hair on my flesh stood up. So we got a spirit coming past and he, he discerns it. He can literally feel the spirit coming past him. And all the hairs on his flesh are standing up. Then he says in verse 16, it stood still. He says, but I could not discern its appearance. He knew it was there, but he couldn't discern exactly what it was. But he knew something was there. He said it was a spirit. A form was before my eyes. There was silence. Then I heard a voice. Verse 17, can mortal man be in the right before God? Can a man be pure before his maker? Even in his servants, he puts no trust. And his angels, he charges with error. So he's talking about what happened before. How much more those who dwell in houses of clay? He's talking about people whose foundation is in the dust, who are crushed like the moth. Between morning and evening, they are beaten to pieces. They perish forever without anyone regarding it. Is not their tent cord plucked up within them? Do they not die and that without wisdom? So we have this accusatory spirit here bringing up things, right? And when he's talking about the tent court, this is something also that Solomon talks about. This has to do with the spiritual realm. Um, this is something that really um, relates when we talk about things with like people who are involved with um, demonic activities like astral projection. They can literally, people who are involved in witchcraft, they can literally project their bodies. They can come out of their body, their spirit, man, they can come out of their body and they can project themselves into different places, into people's homes. Um, they can, this is like a monitoring spirit. So the tent cord is something that relates to this because it has to do with, um, you could think of it as tethering. So tethering their spirit, like, um, because the Bible talks about if it's cut, right? If it's cut, then that's like, um, trying to explain this in, in terms we can understand. When you cut the cord, it speaks to, to death. They can't return to their body. Um, they're, they're not in control. So in Job chapter four, verses 12 through 21, he's talking about this spiritual encounter he has with a demonic spirit that comes to him, not only in his, in his dreams, while he's dreaming at night and in his night visions, but it's also, he can discern it physically in the natural realm. So no longer is it just in the spiritual realm, but it's now in the natural realm. And so this is an example, is gonna go with what we're talking about today, spirit spouses things that come to people in the night season. This is usually how it starts off. The Bible tells us that we have the power and authority to resist the devil and he will flee. That's in James chapter four, verse seven. That means to tell it to go. But when it says to tell it to go or that he will flee, well, that we're like flee from where? Flee to where? Like where, what is that speaking of? Well, if it's saying to tell it to go, that must mean that it came near. So it came near. So what does that mean? You need to take authority over it and you need to tell it to leave. You have to resist it though. That's also key. But before that, before um, the part in James where it tells us to resist the devil and he will flee, we have to be submitted to God. That's the first part of the scripture. And so a lot of things can transpire when we're not submitted to God in every area of our lives, whether it's your, your soul, which is your mind, your will, your emotions, or whether it's your spirit, like we just talked about, people who are in, involved in witchcraft, and 
they're engaging in things where they're yielding over their spirit to another entity, whether that's the demonic, um, they're yielding it over. So they're not submitted to God. So they can't expect to resist the devil or command him to leave because they don't have that. They relinquish that authority. They relinquish that. So now let's start with this. Most people have heard of, and this is where, this is a, um, probably the most intense Zooms that we're gonna do. Um, if someone's around you right now that you really don't want them to hear sensitive topics or things that are gonna go pretty deep, um, maybe move to a different room just because of the nature of what it is. We're talking about spirit spouses, things that are coming in the night season demonic spirits that started off in the spiritual realm and now they're either acting out in the spiritual and coming into the natural realm with you. Um, so you can imagine what we're about to talk about, what, what their intent is. So most people have heard of wet dreams. This is having an, an orgasm in your dream. The origin of this is a demon. This demon is a spirit spouse. We read about Lilith in Isaiah 34 and verse 14. Lilith is one of these spirit spouses, these demons that come at night. One of these um, night crawlers is, is what the Bible refers to them as. In verse 14, Isaiah 34 and 14, it talks about, um, it says, and wild animals shall meet with hyenas. The goat shall, I'm trying to see if I wrote the right, the right verse here. And wild animals shall meet with hyenas. The wild goat shall cry to his fellow. Indeed, there, there the night bird settles. That's in verse, um, verse 14, and finds for her a resting place. Now, need to, if you look in different translations, this, some versions say the night creature. Some translations say this creature is Lilith, L-I-L-I-T-H. When you look up this night creature, also some say night howling creatures. When you look this up, it says it's a night demon that is sexual in nature. So these spirits, they have different names. One is Lilith, sometimes referred to as a night demon, a night creature, night howling creatures. These are different um, translations, different scriptures, where you'll find them named by different names, but it's all referring to the same thing. One, uh, another name that you have most likely heard about um, is Incubus. Incubus is another spirit spouse. It's derived from a Latin word that means nightmare induced by a demon. When you look up what a nightmare is, it talks about a demon that comes in the night. That's what a mare is, M-A-R-E a nightmare. So when people actually say that they had a nightmare, they're saying that a demon came to them in the night. And so a lot of people, they say nightmare and I'm like, do you even know what that means? <laughs> but sometimes, you know, it depends on how they're using it. Sometimes people just say things and they don't even know what they're saying. And sometimes I'm like, that is actually accurate. It, you actually did have a demon come to you in the night. So incubus takes the form of a male or a man, same thing. It will take the, the form of a man that comes usually to have sex with a woman. They are not limited to dreams though. Succubus 
is the female or the woman version, they will take the form of a woman to have sex with a man. They can and do switch genders, meaning themselves can switch genders at one moment. They can be a woman version or the next moment they could be a male version. Um, and also when I say that they could switch, it doesn't mean that whatever version there is that they're only strictly, um, they would only come to a woman or they would only come to a man. That can change. So these spirits will pull a person away from every healthy earthly relationship. In Genesis chapter six, we, we read a little bit about um, some of these spiritual entities that came to earth and had physical relationships with human women and they had offspring with them. We've, many of us have heard about this Nephilim. Actually, I want to, I want to back up for a second. When I said that many of us have heard about Incubus, um, there is a worldly secular band that was popular. I didn't listen to them, but I heard about them. Um, and sometimes when I'm at work, I'll see people like pull up different um, on the, the Spotify that we play for our patients. They will pull up different playlists and I'm, I'm always looking like what it, what it was about to be on. <laughs> um, and I saw that and I thought about that, um, that the name of the band was called Incubus. So most likely that band knew <laughs> exactly where that came from and they decided to use that for the name of their band and then they have um created music and they're putting out lyrics and it's just what's in the music what's behind the music and they're putting that out and they're feeding it to people and then different people wonder why different things come in to their lives into their dreams into you know, they're wondering why they're battling different things. This is an example of an open door. They literally opened a door to the demon Incubus and they're playing it and they're singing it and they're, you know, imitating the, the group members and different things. And it's like some things, some things it's just like, you shouldn't just be going along with it. But they were popular, I think in, I don't know, I didn't listen to them, maybe the 90s, 2000s. Um, but in Genesis chapter six, we read about this. And this is also something that I think most people are familiar with, um, which are the Nephilim. Now, the Bible doesn't talk greatly about them. A lot of the information that people have pieced together and put together over the years have come from not only um, scripture, but also from other extra biblical sources. When I say extra, I mean outside, you know, the Bible, um, like the book of Enoch. The book of Enoch describes the Nephilim. And so let's read about them. Another um, place people will get things to get greater clarification, not just like with commentaries, but they will look into the historian Josephus. And so it's not bad to look at these different things. It's just you need to go to scripture first. And then the first rule when you're going to scripture is something called hermeneutics. This is what they teach us in Bible school. Scripture interprets scripture first. So when you read something in scripture, you need to take that in context and then look and see, like, don't just take one scripture out. You got to look at the context of it. Read what the entire passage is about. So you look in that, that chapter, you look in that, um, and then you put it with the entire word of God because he's the same yesterday, today, forever. He doesn't change. Same God that was in the Old Testament. It's the same God in the New Testament. He's not going to contradict himself. The Bible doesn't contradict itself. So if you read something, you're not sure what it is, take it in context with the entire word of God to see what he's trying to say. And then if you still need help or you want to um, confirm that you're under your understanding of it, then you can go to a commentary. Um, not just any commentary. <laughs> Be careful of the commentaries that you're going to. 
Um, and then on top of that, if you want to go and look into like the historian who is an actual historian, Josephus, um, then that's okay. Or the book of Enoch. The trouble is when people go, they start like diving into it and they become absorbed in it. The Bible talks about that being consumed with things that, that take your, your um, focus off what you should actually be focusing on. And now you've gone off into this whole tangent and you're convinced that giants are still roaming the earth or there's aliens come like, just, just <laughs> try not to go to the extremes. So in Genesis six, it talks about these um, Nephilim that came and, you know, it talks about how they saw that the women were, were fair and they came and they had children with them. It says, Genesis chapter six, verse one, when man began to multiply on the face of the land and daughters were born to them. So these are regular human women the sons of God, we're going to learn in just a minute how these, when it says the sons of God, he's, they're not referring to, um, they're not referring to people. They're referring to angelic beings, the sons of God. And let's take that step further. <laughs> they're usually referring to, um, from when you see that the sons of God, they're referring to demonic angels fallen angels the sons of god saw that the daughters of man were attractive and they took as their wives any they chose then the lord said my spirit shall not abide in man forever for he is flesh his days shall be 120 years verse 4 the nephilim or giants you can see that in um like your footnotes at the bottom, or you know, when you go to look further, who the Nephilim were, it says giants, when the giants were on the earth. It says, the Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God came in to the daughters of man, when they say came in, whenever you read when they came in, that means that they were sexually active. They um, had intercourse with the person. So, it says that the sons of God came into the daughters of man and they bore children to them. They were the mighty men who were of old, the men of renown. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only on evil continually. And the Lord regretted that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him to his heart. So the Lord said, I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of the land, man and animals and creeping things and birds of the heaven, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. So this is before the floods, when the floods are about to come upon the earth. So these, um, these spirits and the dreams that they come in, they're often very violent in nature. These spirits come and they look like a person or another person that you might know or an attractive person or someone that you're familiar with. They often come um, as a person's ex, like something that they, someone that they were previously with. They are a type of familiar spirit because you're familiar with them. These entities still have sex with people today. Even though they don't have physical children anymore, they have spiritual children. They impregnate and impart to women and men. What do they impart? Spiritual seeds are planted and give birth to things and form different ties. So some of the things that they impart, they impart confusion, perversion, Pedi pedophilic thoughts. And we have, I, I realize that many people, this sounds very crazy to them, <laughs> but if you know, you know, if you've dealt with it, then you know. Um, and the more we talk about it, you're gonna understand more. 
but we have a lot of Christian men, men and women, but I'm going to say men dealing with this right now because women are more open to discussing something like this, but we have a lot of Christian men who are dealing with these, these thoughts and they don't have anyone that they could go to and tell about this or feel safe telling. They don't feel safe telling their wives or um, their pastors or, or anyone. People are living in secret with these things. Many people live scared to go to sleep because they don't know what's going to happen to them when they are asleep. Others have become so used to it that they just accept it. They just accept that this is the way it is. This is the way it's going to be. Some may even start to enjoy it. They have been seduced so much to this point. The spirit has often become jealous and territorial over the person, and they won't let them be with anyone else. Again, this sounds far-fetched, but I know people who have dealt with this People the Lord has given me personally to give a word to them to help deliver them and set them free. These encounters have lasting effects on people. The people often feel a lasting effect. They, they can still feel like it happened. Like when they wake up, they still feel like something happened when they were asleep. They often feel violated or like they were date raped. I don't know if you remember, um, I don't know how else to really explain that, but that used to be something that was not common, but common enough where that term date rape came about. So it'd be like when somebody put something in someone's drink or drug them, and that was the intention to take advantage of them in a sexual way. And then they would wake up and not know what happened to them. This is often what it feels like. That person will go to sleep and then they will wake up feeling like something happened. And when I say something, I mean something like this. These spirits often destroy relationships, marriages, the person's peace and ability to function. These orgasms are usually addictive and tormenting and followed by guilt, condemnation, and accusation. Usually the devil will come right in after it happens and start his role as the accuser. After all, that is a part of his name. It means the accuser of the brethren, Satan, the accuser of the brethren. He'll start with saying things like, you're disgusting, you're a bad Christian, um, just trying to make you feel worse about what happened, as if you had real, really any control over it from happening as far as that spirit coming in. Now, you can open up doors. I'm not talking about doors. I'm talking about the actual act of the demonic spirit. So he will though, he will get you to eventually to do the things and then accuses you after doing them or after they are done to you. One sign of something like this, and this is a common one, a person will wake up with scratches on their body, they'll have marks on their body. Why will they have marks on their body? Because the demon's job ultimately, like every other demonic spirit, is to be like their leader, Satan. And their MO, again, is to kill, steal, and destroy. We read that in John 10, 10. So they want to inflict pain. They delight in inflicting pain, fear, mental anguish. Their ultimate goal is to destroy the abundant life that God has meant for you. Some ways they succeed in doing this is by bringing torment, confusion, shame, guilt. They make the person feel horribly internally where a person won't want to, to preach the gospel. They won't want to cast out demons or any of the other signs of a believer because it makes the person feel condemned and not equipped because then they feel that they can't even handle what's going on in their own minds and their own spiritual condition so they feel too condemned to help another person in their spiritual struggles they want to pile on guilt shame and condemnation on the person then they want to isolate the person because they feel that they can't go to anyone there's no one who will understand them. There's no one who will believe them. 
These demons don't want you to get close to other people, especially not your spouse. If you're married, they don't want you to get close to your spouse. In fact, they feel you are their spouse. And they don't want you to have another. This is part of the reason some people keep finding themselves in broken relationships. So like when they're not married or maybe they were married before, but the point is these spirits will do things and cause the people to end up in this cycle where they end up in broken relationships. They keep break, breaking up the person, the people. Again, this is the, a reason that a person will consistently or constantly have wet dreams, orgasm dreams, and feeling overpowered by an addiction to pornography. When you have these things going on, you will find spirit spouses, perversion, and lust usually at work. Another indicator for this being at work, a spirit spouse being at work, is someone who has been divorced multiple times. I, I just said that. Um, they've been divorced multiple times or their real spouse has unexplained or illogical, untimely deaths. Because again, this is a territorial spirit. They will do things behind the scenes and you won't know why it's happening, but different things will keep recurring. There'll be a common theme to it. Another indicator when the person is married, another indicator of a spirit spouse at work is when one spouse has no affection or sexual drive for their human spouse. So what do we do once we know this is at work? We look for open doors to help people get free and to help, of course, like they can't just get free on their own. You have to be led by the Holy Spirit who's going to open your eyes and let you know that this is what is actually going on. This is the root of the problem and the Holy Spirit is going to guide you. So what are some open doors? Number one, sexual sin of any form is a huge open door. So what kind of sexual sins? Fornication. Again, that's any sexual relations that are outside of marriage. Perversion, adultery, bestiality, homosexuality, viewing and consuming pornography. Why? Because this is a breeding ground for these types of demonic spirits. This is, this is their nature. This is their breeding ground. This is their breeding ground because these demons have an insatiable appetite for sexual perversion and sexual immorality. If you're a victim of it, you'll know what I mean. If not, you can even begin to, you, you can't even begin to imagine. So I'm just asking you to stick with me. Number two um, for an open door is witchcraft. Being involved in witchcraft witchcraft potions, love potions, love spells. Now this sounds like something that's off of TV or off of a movie or Sabrina the Teenage Witch, but it's not. <laughs> this is actually going on. You can actually look this up with a simple Google search. Um, you, if you go to any of, like when you're out shopping and you're in any um, like different candle stores or um, like, smell good stores that you might think of. They have sections now. I mean, you'll even find this in like the dollar store. They have sections of different things where you can engage in different witchcraft targeted at things like this. Love potions, love spells. Or, I mean, there's all kind of other witchcraft things that you could do as well. And they have that there. I've seen them. Um, but again, you can even Google it and see. You can look it up online. So if someone's involved in this type of things, putting love spells on people, casting, um, casting things on people in order to get their love or affection, this is another open door. And it all, it doesn't have to be 
um, something malicious. It could even be something people just don't know. They thought it was just fun, games, innocent. Um, what, what's the harm? What's wrong with doing that? This is an open. It's witchcraft, it's manipulation. It's trying to impose your will on the will of someone else's. In some cases, a spirit husband or spirit wife can be transferred down the bloodline from one generation to the next. They may attach themselves in the womb. No, this is not fair. But again, demons don't play fair. The devil doesn't play fair. The demonic kingdom is not based off of fairness. Sometimes the father or the mother, but a lot of the times we see sometimes, and this is, there's different reasons why, but the, sometimes the father can be into perversion or addictions or different things like that. They may have an, a wife or husband have an affair. Um, and these things can be passed down the bloodline. What thing? Spirit spouses. They can attach themselves to the bloodlines. What do I mean? Again, spirit spouses can attach themselves to the blood bloodline and can lay legal claim wherever they can find it. Again, Satan is a legalist. His demonic kingdom is based off of um, legal um, legalities. They can't do anything if they don't have a legal um if, it, if they don't have any legal grounds, we read about this in Proverbs about curses. A curse without a cause cannot land. So if you're not doing anything, then like out of the will of God, if you're staying submitted to the Lord, you're resisting the devil, he will flee. But if you're not, then you open yourself up to different things in the demonic realm, which gives them legal ground, legal access, and the curse can land. Look up that scripture. It's in Proverbs. And that's just one of the scriptures. This usually occurs when someone from the previous generation was involved in witchcraft, sexual perversion, rape is a big one, molestation is another big one, human sacrifice is a huge one, Pedophilia is one, pornography, masturbation, abuse. These are all different ways that these things can attach to the bloodline and come down. Some of the manifestations of this can be seen in the child's behavior when you look at when they started doing different things, different tendencies that run in the family. And so how, how, how is this? So we know that the, the abuser, the person that um, started this or um, opened the door, the abuser already has a demon in the sense that they've already, they're already demonized. When I say demonized, this goes back to the first teaching when we talked about having a demon doesn't necessarily mean that the person is possessed with the demon like we look at with Hollywood movies with the exorcist where their heads spin around. That's not what it means. Um, a person can be possessed by a demon, but a person can, and most oftentimes, be inf influenced. That's number one. They'll be influenced by the demon or oppressed by the demon. Those are the two biggest ones, the most common ones that we see. And so the abuser already has a demon, which is why they were able to do what they did in the first place because they were under the influence of a demon, right? People, the Bible talks about that, about tree, whatever tree it is. If it's a good tree, it's going to bear good fruit. If it's a bad tree, it's going to bear bad fruit. Out of what's in your heart, the mouth speaks, right? So whatever's inside, we see the fruit of it, right? We see the fruit come out. So why do I say that? Because they wouldn't have done what they did if they didn't have whatever source behind it. So if you have righteousness, joy, peace that surpasses all understanding, you have um, the love of God, you have self-control, 
Um, you have different things like that. That source is the Holy Spirit. And that's why that's coming out. If you have things like anger, rage, wrath, hatred, murder, strife, um, just aggressive tendencies, crimes of, of rage, that what is the source of that? That's not God. That's from the demonic realm. How was that person, you hear of all these different crimes and things that happen. And it's like, how can a person even do that? How? I can't even wrap my mind around that. That's because there was a demon behind it. The person was influenced by a demon. So these spirits attach themselves to the victim through the abuse. We talked about different abuses like the rape, molestation, um, different abuse that may have happened to them. That's how the spirits attach themselves to the victim. Whatever the abuse was that occurred, this was the open door. Again, it's not fair, but this is how they gained access. This is how they came in. This is how they have um, entered. Sometimes people will repress things that have happened to them so much so that they don't even remember the abuse that let the thing in. But the demon will and may tell you, what do I mean? When you're in deliverance and you have a situation like this, don't talk with the demon because the Bible tells us like there's no cases other than the one where Jesus asked the man, um, he asked the demon, what is your name? And the demon said legion because they were many. He did that for us as an example. So we would know a person can have more than one demon. Some people think you can't have any. Clearly, Bible says cast out demons. And there's multiple examples where Jesus cast it out of a person. And the word says they went out of him. This is a case, or that was a case, where there were multiple demons. The Bible tells us about what a legion was back in that time, what it consisted of which was anywhere from, I think, like 2,000 to like 4,000. It, it was a large number. So it was, he was trying to let us know how many demons a person can actually have. It was not a model for us to engage in deliverance talking to demons. We're not supposed to do that. And a lot of times when you're engaging in the spiritual realm and you're engaging in different things like that, that crosses over into different things where you're talking to spirits demonic spirits that crosses into necromancy which is clearly against what god says so you're not supposed to talk with the demon but you can ask the person by their name like so and so do you remember a time when do you remember when whatever you're talking about when when that started do you remember when something changed do you remember when the bed wedding started? Do you remember when the nightmares started coming? Do you remember different events? You can do that. Another door, this is what we talked about last week, was um, soul ties. Another door is soul ties. When a par person walks away from another that they have a soul tie with, they can become fragmented. What do I mean? Their soul can become ripped to pieces, torn apart. Hence the phrase when people says that they feel like their heart has been ripped out, like they've been torn to pieces. They feel like they, they're, they're in pieces. This is the proverbial heart of their soul. The Bible talks about how a, it says in Psalms chapter seven, verses one through two, it talks about a person's pursuers can be like a lion and tears their soul apart, rending it to pieces with none to deliver. David says to the Lord, you restore my soul in Psalm 23 and three, my soul, you restore, you restore the broken pieces back together. The enemy takes an advantage of, of this. This is a weak point that he will come in and 
he will come as a spirit spouse. Some people may not even realize this is happening to them or remember the dreams, just the effects and the feelings from it. So after the fall in the Garden of Eden, the world became very wicked. We read that in Genesis chapter six. And the sons of God, we talked about how they're fallen angels who took daughters of man as their wives. And the sons of God were a part of a, of a group of angels that got kicked out of heaven with Satan. So the sons of God, they're angels, they're spirits. They're not good angels, they're demonic angels. Where do we get this from? Job chapter six, I'm sorry, Job chapter one, verse six. Again, Job chapter one, verse six. Go there. Job chapter one, verse six. It says, this is where Satan was allowed to test Job. It says, now there was a day when the sons of God came to pre present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. Job chapter 2, verse 1. This is when Satan goes and attacks Job's health. Verse 1. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to pre present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them to present himself before the Lord. They had to give an account. Demonic spirits have to give an account to the Lord. Job 38, verse 7. When the morning, when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Sons of God is referring to these fallen angels. In all these instances, the term is referring to spirits, angelic beings. So these are fallen angels, created, created beings who must give an account to the Lord. We can also see this in 1 Kings chapter 22, verse 21. Again, 1 Kings chapter 22, verse 1. Verse 21, I'm sorry. First Kings chapter 22, verse 21 says, Then a spirit came forward and stood before the Lord, saying, I will entice him. So this is the story when Micaiah prophesies against Ahab, and the Lord sends a lying spirit to prophesy um, lies to him. But this spirit we see going before the Lord and presenting himself. And then, so this is an ex another example of, yes, demonic spirits do come and present themselves before the Lord. They're not kicked out, not yet. I mean, they've kicked, they're kicked out, but they still, we see them in the Bible, still being able to come and present themselves before the Lord. They're not locked up yet. They're either on the earth or they're going to God giving account for what they're doing. They're not in the they're not in the abyss yet. They're not locked away yet. They're not chained away. We see this in Zechariah chapter 3 verse 1. This is where um there's a vision of Joshua the high priest standing before the Lord it says then he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand to accuse him. So let's go back to Genesis 6, chapter 1, real quick. Okay, so when, oh, I also should have said, um, for what we were, no, I'll say this first, I'm sorry. Um, so Genesis chapter six, verse one and two makes the contrast that 
these beings that we are talking about, they are non-human because it says they were with man. It says they, they were with man. It didn't say that they were man. Not one of them that is speaking about is man. It says that they were with man. In Genesis chapter six, verse one, it says when man began to multiply and daughters were born to them, the Hebrew word for man is Adam and the generic term for mankind. So it's speaking of man, mankind. This is not attributed to fallen angels, demonic spirits, those are either addressed as such or it says sons of God. We can also look to Jude chapter 6 and verse 7. And it's, it's going to explain a little bit more about that. In Genesis chapter 5, verses 1 and 2, nothing suggests that some men that is talking about the some men were having children rather than the sons of God. So spirits having sex with humans did happen in the Bible and it still happens today. People, Christians, don't recognize that this is happening to them today. That it is a demon coming to them in a dream and some in physical form whether it started in physical form or it started in the dream or reversed, but it started. They haven't recognized that their dreams do not have control over their lives. And when I say that, I'm talking about Christians. When I say Christians, I mean believers, followers of Christ. When I say followers, I mean following the word, not just hearing the word, but doing the word. Because the ones that do the word are the ones that have authority. The ones that just hear the word, they don't have any authority or they have um they don't know how to use their authority or they don't have much of it because they're not doing the things that and that are recognized in the spirit that gives them authority greater authority a greater measure so these people they haven't recognized that their dreams do not have control over their lives people say well how can i control what happens in my dreams but they do have authority through Jesus Christ to take over, to take authority over the dream and say to that mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea. You can speak over your dreams and say, no demon is allowed to come into my dreams. No demon is allowed to come into my dream realm. No demons are allowed to come to me because my dreams are submitted to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I don't allow dreams, um, demons to come in to my dreams. You can say things like, I divorce any spirit spouse in the name of Jesus. I sever every attachment from a demon in the name of Jesus. I say no more. These You have to use your words. You have to use your authority. You have to know you have the authority and you have to know how to use it. You do have authority and the ability to do that. Whatever happens in your dreams does not have to just happen. You aren't subject to your dreams when you are a believer in Christ Jesus. Your dreams are subject to you. Your dreams are subject to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. The Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And we take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Thoughts, your dreams are thoughts. Job when Eliphaz was talking, he talked about the visions of the night, the thoughts. Those need to be taken captive. They need to be taken captive to the obedience of Christ Jesus. Vain imaginations bow to the name of Jesus. Anything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and spirit spouses exalt themselves against the knowledge of, the God, of knowledge of God. So they need to be taken captive. These spirit spouses, they come in and they trespass and they take over and they get you to do whatever they want you to do. And God wants you to be free. 
The Bible says Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. It also says that you can tell the mountain to move and it will be removed. The Bible says also that nothing will be impossible for you. This nothing includes your dreams. Nothing will be impossible for you. If you want to make your dreams obey the Lordship of Jesus Christ, then they will. You can do that. Demons have to bow. They all have to bow. We aren't scared of any demons. We aren't scared of any incubus, succubus, lilith, or any other night crawler. They all have to bow at the mighty name of Jesus. They all tremble at his name. That's what the Bible says. Even the, dem the demons tremble. This isn't a fear thing. It's a, oh, I found out you're there. You got to go. You tell it to come out and go in the name of Jesus. The Bible tells us that we are not to be ignorant of Satan's devices. Not his schemes, his plans, none of it. We are to be aware. And demons hate when you become aware of them because they know when they've been found out, they have to go. Many people in their dreams feel like they can't yell out. Have we heard this before? People will be having terrifying dreams or encounters in the night season where they're even awake. And they, they come into this thing, it's a sleep paralysis. Now there is a medical, physical phenomenon that does happen that is actually like some something that actually happens with your brain and your body in the first few seconds when you awake, where it takes a moment for your body to catch up with your brain and realize that you're awake before it moves. This is over seconds and that is normal. What I'm talking about is when it lasts longer, it shouldn't be going up. It's not an extended thing. It's not a minute you were laying there, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, you couldn't get up, you couldn't call out, you couldn't yell out. That's demonic, that's a spirit spouse. So these people, they feel like they can't move, like something or someone is holding them down. They can't wake up. They can't come out of it. They can't say the name of Jesus. That is a demon, and you need to be delivered. There's no reason why you can't make your dreams subject to the lordship of Jesus Christ. Again, children also, they need to be taught this. They don't need to think that having bad dreams is normal. That's not normal. It's not just a normal part of childhood. It's not just a phase. We need to teach kids the word of God and how to use the name of Jesus. This is what I do. My kids know the word and they know how to use it. They know it's their sword. They know it's their power, their authority. They know. They actually um, had times where they've had to do this for themselves. The youngest one to the oldest one. And so we need to teach our kids their authority, the word, how to use the name of Jesus. And it doesn't matter how small they are. They need to know how to say the name of Jesus, how to use the name of Jesus, how to cover themselves in the blood of Jesus, how to speak the name of Jesus, right? The blood in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, through you, we tread down our foes. Through your name, we tread down those who rise up against us. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. And so, in the name of Jesus, every demon, I command you to go, to get out now and leave me. Leave my dreams in the name, name of Jesus. These are things that... that you would say in a situation like this. These are things that you should teach your children to say in a situation like this. Um, some people have like, you know, bedtime prayers that they'll say and, it'll, you know, and it'll be like, good night, Lord Jesus, thank you for today. Um, just something simple, right? But when you're having things like this or you're noticing things like this, and actually always, you need to be pre preventative. Um, don't wait until something happens. You need to be proactive. Saying things like, I forbid any demon from coming to me in my dreams, from coming into this room, from coming into my soul, my mind. I forbid you from entering my dreams. 
and I open myself up only to the Holy Spirit and his leading. Holy Spirit, I can't wait to encounter you in my dreams. I thank you, Jesus, that you're going to take me into new things, the depths and revelation, um, your presence in my dreams. I thank you, Lord, that you're giving, you're going to give my spirit what my spirit needs in my dreams and no demons can come in the name of Jesus. This should be a, a prayer that you say before bed. This is be something that you pray over your children, have them say themselves saying, we don't need to say good night, Jesus. <laughs> you could say that, but you better say something else in, in addition, uh, you know, saying good night. I'll see you in the morning. No, I'm not saying that because the Lord Jesus is not leaving me. I'm staying with the Lord Jesus all night. You're going to be with me. You're going to be with me in my dreams. You're going to be covering me. You're going to be speaking to me, giving me dreams of wisdom, instruction, revelation, insight, you're going to be imparting things from your Holy Spirit to me, gifts, a downloading assignments. Thank the Lord, right? We're not going to be doing night terrors or nightmares. We're not going to be having night sweats. There's no spirit spouses coming. Nothing needs to be coming in here. Looking like anything. No, not doing it. Make sure if you want from deliverance from this and anything else, number one, you have to close the door. Close the door to sin. Any sin in your life, you have to close the door to it. Sin, close it. You have to come out of whatever lifestyle that you're living in that is against the word of God. You need to tell yourself no. And if you feel you can't because it just overwhelms you and makes you do it even when you don't want to do it, that's a sure sign it's a demon. When you've tried to stop something over and over again and you just can't stop, you just can't stop, you just keep doing it. It's like this overwhelming urge that you get until you do it. This is a demon. You need deliverance. Spirit spouses do not want you to prosper in any area of your life. They want to keep you broke in poverty, out of relationships, out of work. They want the person they are inhabiting just to themselves. Again, remember, they are territorial. They intentionally connect you with a person. If you're going to be with anybody, they're going to intentionally connect you with a person who will mistreat you, be violent to you, cheat on you, manipulate you, do psychological damage to you they because they want to inflict more pain and mental anguish to the person but remember the bible tells us that god knows the plans that he has for us right the plans to give us a hope and a future so we know that the spirits that are working they're trying to bring the opposite they don't want you to have a hope they don't want you to have a future. These spirits work the opposite. They work to pervert your marriage and also to pervert the law of creation by having spirit children with a person. Sounds crazy, but it's true. The Lord tells us to be fruitful and multiply in our marriages. Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. The goal of spirit spouses and spirit children is to block natural reproduction and real marriage some physical indicators of this at work could be fibroids cysts miscarriages other reproductive issues in women and men now i said could be not all the time but it could be you need to take it as a whole what is the whole situation going on are the other things at play then this can be an indicator some people have testified of being in terrible cycles where they would grow in God and in relationship with him and then fall off over and over, never coming to and attaining the life he had for them. Some testify of God showing them in visions how the spirit spouse dressed them. This is what I've heard. I've heard this from people. I've heard this from regular people. I've heard this from people who used to be high priest, 
high priestesses in different, um, you don't even want to know, satanic stuff. And they talk about how the spirit spouse dressed them and how it put rings on their fingers and how then it cursed the work of their hands. They talk about how sometimes they had these black veils on covering them, black veils, so they could not see where they actually were or how they're qual qualified. They couldn't see the truth. Um, they talked about this gold crown with red jewelry signifying the bride of Satan. They talked about shackles on their hands and feet causing stagnation. They talked about seeing a chastity belt causing them not to enjoy their actual spouse. They talked about a target being on their back causing the spirit of rejection to operate in their life. Now you don't have to believe it, but it's true. The word of God tells us that our garments will be white. We read that in Revelation 3 and verse 5. This is representing our purity, cleanness, undefiledness, our closeness with Jesus, being an overcomer. If this is something that you think you might be dealing with, ask the Lord to reveal to you if there is a spirit spouse operating in your life. And then what do you do? Go on a real fast. People who don't believe in prayer and fasting, they don't believe in the full Bible. The disciples didn't fast when they were with Jesus, but Jesus said a time would come when they would need to. The time is now. He didn't say if you fast, but he said when you fast. So, you might need to go on a real fast. So what do I say by real fast? People will say, I'm fasting social media, which is good. I've, I've done that before too, but I called it break. Or they'll say I'm fasting, um, I don't know, just whatever, that's not food. Biblical fasts were connected to food. You see this all throughout the Bible, food. So go on a real fast. I'm not going to tell you what a real fast consists of as far as how many hours. Is it noon to evening or whatever? Ask the Lord. He'll reveal it to you. The Bible says these kind come out by prayer and fasting. This type, this type, spirit spouse, you may find is a part of that kind that the Bible is talking about that come out only by prayer and fasting. When I say prayer and fasting, don't just go on a fast and not be eating. You have to be praying. When should you pray? Whenever you think about food, whenever you need to redirect your focus, whenever you need to um, be built up spiritually again, um, whenever you think about whatever spiritually or you know, you just, you just need to be praying. Don't just have, well, I prayed in the morning. I prayed in the evening. So I prayed two times a day and I fasted um, from six to three. You need to be praying. If you're, if you start thinking about something, pray. Something starts happening to you, pray. Prayer and fasting. Why? Fasting breaks down their power. Whose power? The demonic's power. How do I know? They see and they could smell fasting on your life, your consecration, your flesh. They see is under the lordship of Jesus Christ. You are submitted to the lordship of Jesus Christ. When you say go, they're going to go. That thing has to go because you fully submitted yourself to the lordship of Jesus Christ. The demonic knows when you actually have power, when you are actually consecrated, when you're actually submitted to the Lord, when they actually need to obey. Fasting is one of the tools that the Lord Jesus has given us to help break strongholds and empower us. So, 
So those who say fastings, fasting is works, you know, and it's workspace, that's a doctrine of devils. The Bible talks about doctrines of devils. That's one of them. Jesus fasted. He said that a time would come when we would fast. He said, when you fast, not if you fast. So the people that say you don't have to fast or don't fast, that's a doctrine of devils. That's against the word of God. That's actually anti-Christ. It's against Christ and what he said. The word of God says there are demons that only come out by with prayer and fasting. Jesus said, when you fast, not if. Jesus fasted as well, by the way. We just said that Jesus is our model. He is who we are to imitate. His word is our roadmap, not what somebody else says. Number two. So these are steps. Number one, praying and fasting. Number two, take communion. You could take it um, your first day or when you break for your fast for the day or um, when you finish your fast. Ask the Lord how he wants you to take communion. But this is something else that is, um, it is affirming your covenant with the Lord Jesus, you're, you're submitted to him. Um, this is something that is acknowledged and honored and holds weight in the spiritual realm. So take communion. When you're committing yourself, this is when you're committing yourself to the finished work of the cross. This is what you're saying when you're receiving the body of Christ, when you're receiving the blood of Jesus. Um, Paul talks about how we're partakers. Are we not partakers with Christ in his sacrifice when we do this? So we're saying we're partaking of it. This breaks chains in and of itself. It puts demons on the run. It's a covenant healing meal. You need to make sure you break your covenant with the devil. And you need to make sure you affirm and establish your covenant with Jesus as a follower of Jesus that he rules and reigns in your life. You need to let demons know that. Where they stand, you need to let them know. Jesus is the Lord of my life and he is my Lord, not you. Number three, speak the word and confess the scriptures. Number four, make sure your life is devoted to Christ. Come out of the lukewarmness. It's, it's mess. If you're in sin or fornicating, you are not only lukewarm, but you are backslidden. You need to get back on track 100%, completely devoted and sold out to God, period. No other way, no process talk. Today is the day to serve the Lord Jesus Christ fully. Tomorrow is not promise. Return to God all the way, not stopping one sin at a time. That's not what we see in the Bible. That's not what's honored. Sin equals hell. We're not in sin unless you're trying to go to hell. What am I saying? If somebody slips up, they're a sinner and they're going to hell? No. The Bible says when you make a practice, that means you keep doing it over and over and over again. So when you make a practice of it, and the Bible says you are of your father, the devil. The Bible says no one who knows the Lord makes the practice and keeps on sinning. That's what the word says. That's not what I say. Look it up. So you need help with that. Ask the Holy Spirit and he'll help you. You don't just keep doing it. You need help. The Bible lays out different things for you to get help. Holy Spirit is number one. Number four, you need to renounce spirit spouses and break its grip over your life. Believe in the authority of Jesus that he's already given to you through the finished work of the cross. You need to repent of wrongdoing, sins, break all contracts and covenants in the spirit, in the demonic realm. Luke 10 and 19, it tells us all authority has been given to me by Christ Jesus, to trample on every serpent and over every, when it talks about serpents and scorpions, it's talking about demons. It's not talking about actual snakes. 
It's talking about demons. It says, and nothing shall hurt me. This Bible says the Savior that resurrected Christ Jesus from the dead is in me, dwells in me. That's Romans 8 and 11. That power that literally raised Christ Jesus himself from the dead is in me. It's in you when you are a real believer and follower of Jesus Christ. The power that he used to bring himself back to life is in you. It's in us. It's not by works that we are saved. We know this verse. By grace, the grace of God, that he died for us. He shed his blood for us. He rose for us he's now seated at the right hand of the father and in his hand he holds all the power all the power all authority has been given to him in heaven on and on earth and he's given that power he's given that authority to us again to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy all the power of the enemy and nothing shall hurt us that's a promise. You need to stand on the word of God and know that that is the truth. Whatever lie the devil is feeding you, it's a lie. You have been given all the authority. Nothing shall hurt you. This is what we have inside of us. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Greater is, is he that is in me than any spirit spouse. Number five, abort anything implanted in you by a spirit spouse. You have an encounter with a spirit spouse, a demonic dream. You feel like something happened in your sleep. You had a demonic dream of whatever sort. You need to abort whatever was implanted in you. How do you do that? You say, in the name of Jesus, I abort every seed that was implanted in me in the night season. In the name of Jesus. Number six. Confess, declare, and uproot any seed or offspring implanted in your life by these demons. If the torment continues after this, they need to get deliverance from a minister. Deliverance is the children's bread. No matter what, you need to be delivered. A lot of it is self. You can do um, through self-deliverance. A lot of the people that I've worked with have done self-deliverance and have experienced true freedom. The last person I did this with, um, I met them when I went somewhere in another state and I became pretty good friends with them and the Lord had gave me a word that they were dealing with something I should check on them. Um, it was ended up being long story short along these lines. They um, they live in another state. They got a whole different life going on pretty far away from me. And the Lord still speaks, right? And he'll give you a word to help somebody deliver, get delivered. So we were talking about this and what could she do? What did she have to do? And just a testimony from her of the freedom that she experienced. It works. The word of God works. Which is number seven, get in your word. I don't care if it's one verse over and over again. This is what I've told people. Get it, speak it, decree it, declare it in the name of Jesus and command that thing to go in Jesus' name and forbid it to return. Number eight, these are steps. So you can't say, well, I did that. But what else can I do? These are steps. Number eight, take the situation to the courts of heaven and ask God, your righteous judge. This is one of his names, Luke Chapter 18, verses 1 through 8, the righteous judge. Yes, your righteous judge, Jesus, your great advocate. He is your high priest, the great high priest, your advocate, your lawyer. You need to ask the Holy Spirit, your counselor. These are legal terms that the Bible is telling us. We are in a, a, a war, a battle in the spiritual realm, and it's based off of legalities. A lot of things have to do with the legal side of it. Judge, advocate, counselor. We need to ask them to deal with them. Who? Whatever demonic spirit is harassing you, whatever's going on, and to use the blood of Jesus against them. You need to use the blood of Jesus against them. Cover yourself in the blood of Jesus. Number nine, I love this one. Play worship music throughout the day and fill your house with worship. 
especially at night. Number 10, I love this one. Play the word of God. You can do this via an app. There's many apps. I have the ESV app on, on my phone. So you're not getting commercials and different things like that. You play the app throughout the day in your house or um, have your uh, AirPods in and you're playing it in your ears whenever you can. Fill the atmosphere. Fill yourself with the word, especially while you sleep. But here's the thing. When you build it up in the atmospheres all around, those things can't stay. They start to lose. They, it's like they're suffocating. And then when you're playing it at night, it's all in the atmosphere. And it's all in your spirit. So you're filling yourself with the word, filling yourself with praise and worship. They don't want to be in that atmosphere. The word is in you. They're not getting in. Praise and worship is in you. They're not getting in. It puts up. A, a barrier. You can also put the shield of faith around you. We're going to talk about that as a barrier. Something else, number 11, get all old trinkets and different items that you may have. Letters. Uh, they don't have these anymore, but this is why they're old. Any CDs that you guys used to have. Any, any reminders from your exes um, or previous relationships. These are soul ties, connections. This is legal ground, grounds for them to stay. They feel they're attached to it. They, they have the right to stay as long as you hold on to it. You hold on to it, you're holding on to them. Get it out. Number 12, anoint your bed, your pillows, your bedding, anoint your, your house with oil. Number 13, we talked about this a little bit just a second ago. Worship and praise the Lord and thank him. Ask the Lord to dispatch his angels, the angels of the Lord, to guard you in all your ways. Ask the Lord to be a wall of fire around you. These are scriptures to cover you under his wings. Put up a, the shield of faith. Put on the armor of God. Number 14, stay the course. Stay in holiness. Don't break covenant with the Lord. And if you fall, you better repent quickly and get back on track. And then keep moving in holiness, in purity, in righteousness, in the strength of the Lord. How can you do it on your own? You can't. You do it in the strength of the Lord. The word tells us that with man, it may be impossible, but with God, all things are possible. So don't say you can't do it. If you're doing it with God, you can do it. Number 15, stay in prayer. What is prayer? Communication with God. When I say stay in prayer, you should be constantly communicating with God. What does that look like? You on the floor in the corner all day? No, it doesn't look like that. You're simply talking to God. You're having a dialogue with God. You're talking to him. He's talking to you. So you're not talking to your friends, family, exes, uh, your current, whoever you're with, everyone else but God. You can't be talking to everybody else but God. And he's the last on your list. It's not going to write. Get, it's not going to it's not going to work. You need to get your priorities straight. He's first and he's foremost. And he will not tolerate another spot. He knows the genuineness of your heart. The Bible says he tested. He tests the genuineness of your heart. And so that's what I have for today. I want right now and I want to uh, walk us through a, a prayer so I want you to repeat after me. So I'll just give you a minute if you just want to like get in the headspace to pray. Even if you want to anoint yourself with oil, anoint your, your area with oil, anointing oil. So if you're ready, And actually, I, I actually make anointing oil according to anointing oil in Exodus. Um, I brought, those are what's actually in the um, prayer containers at church. Um, but I'm actually in the process, my husband and I, we're in the process of a lot of things. But um, 
of making and being able to give people anointing oil. Um, where you know where the oil came from, it's been prayed over and you can trust it and put it up in your house. So um, we should have those soon um, and be able to offer those to people. Okay, so repeat after me. And then at the end, um, I'll, I'll pray over us and just close us out. But just repeat after me. In the mighty name of Jesus, I command every spirit spouse to release me now by the fire of God. Release me now. Loose your hold in the name of Jesus. Every spirit wife, every spirit husband, I divorce you now by the blood of Jesus. Everything that you have deposited in my life come out by fire in the name of Jesus. Every power that is working against my marriage and relationships, I bind you. And I break your power now in the name of Jesus Christ. I break all covenants entered into with this spirit spouse in the name of Jesus. I command the fire of God to burn every demonic symbol, every ring, every wedding gown, crown, necklace, shoes, veils, earrings, bracelets, photographs, all materials used for this spirit spouse wedding or marriage in the name of Jesus, I command it to burn by the fire of God now in Jesus name. I break every blood and soul tie covenant with the spirit spouse now. I break this covenant with the spirit spouse in the name of Jesus. I sever it with the sword of the spirit now in the name of Jesus Christ. You spirit spouse tormenting my life and my marriage, I bind you now in the name of Jesus Christ. I cast you out of my life. Go from me now. Go from my mind. Go from my will. Go from my emotions. Go from my soul. Go from my body. Go from my loins. Go from my decisions. Go from every area of me now in Jesus' name. Get out in the name of Jesus. I command every incubus to go now in the name of Jesus. I command every succubus to go now in the name of Jesus. Lilith, come up and out in the name of Jesus. You unclean, foul demons, go now to the abyss. Go back to the pit of hell now and never return. Lilith, come up and out in the name of Jesus. I renounce all evil materials deposited in my body as a result of every sexual relation with the spirit spouse in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, send your Holy Ghost fire into me and burn out all unclean things that have been deposited into my spirit by the spirit spouse in Jesus name. I break the head of the snake deposited into my body by the spirit spouse to do me harm. And I command it to come up and out in Jesus name. I purge out with the blood of Jesus, every evil material deposited into my womb that has prevented me from having children on the earth in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over my womb right now. I decree and declare that my womb is healed. My womb is restored. My womb is holy. My womb is righteous unto God in the name of Jesus. 
I forbid any demon from depositing anything into my womb in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you that you are repairing and restoring all damage done to any part of my body in the name of Jesus. All damage that has been done to my marriage, my body is being restored in Jesus' name. I reject and cancel every curse, every pronouncement of evil, every spell, every hex, every vex, every incantation, every enchantment placed on me by a spirit spouse. All hoodoo, all voodoo, I break you and cancel you now in the name of Jesus. I command the spirit spouse to turn its back on me forever in Jesus' name. Off of my lineage, off of my children, off of my bloodline in the name of Jesus. Out in Jesus' name. Go from me now and never come back. I decree and declare that Jesus Christ is my Lord for eternity in Jesus name. I establish the Lordship of Jesus Christ in my life. I say that in my life, the Lord Jesus rules and reigns. I have no other Lord. I have no other God, but Jesus Christ. I serve no one else but Jesus Christ. I plead the blood of Jesus and I cancel all evil markings on my body, all demonic writings that have been placed on me in the name of Jesus. I break them. Father, I pray that you would send Holy Ghost fire to every wicked, evil scheme, plot, and plan of the enemy right now. I break and bind every demon of lust, perversion, every spirit of perversion come up and out in the name of Jesus. Every demon that came in through rape or molestation, incest or bestiality, through homosexuality or pedophilia, through pornography, through abuse, through satanic ritual abuse, through masturbation that came in through looking at inappropriate and sexual images and videos in the name of Jesus, go right now. Loose me now in the name of Jesus. Loose your hold. Out. 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 Go now up and out in the name of Jesus. Spirit of confusion. Identity confusion. Gender confusion. Sexual orientation confusion. Poverty. Depression. Lack. Condemnation. Anger. Wrath. Rage. Murder. Jealousy, envy, rejection, bitterness, strife, unforgiveness. Come up and out now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I plead the blood of Jesus over my mind, over my will, my emotions, my desires, my intentions, my motivations, my body, my soul, my spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus. I forbid any demon from speaking into my ears. My spirit. I forbid any demon from communicating and whispering any lies any longer to me in the name of Jesus. I silence every seducing spirit. All spirits of seduction, go now in the name of Jesus. Every demon of deception, go now in Jesus' name. Every familiar demon, come out now in the name of Jesus. Every demon that came in through sacrifices and blessings, come up and out right now in the name of Jesus. Every demon that came in through the bloodline, 
from the father's side, from the mother's side, down through the generations, come up and out in Jesus' name. I break every generational curse, every curse in the bloodline, every inherited unclean spirit, go now in the name of Jesus. Come out of the bloodline right now in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over my bloodline. Every spirit of adultery, fornication, divorce, go now in Jesus' name. Come out of every hiding place. Every demon trying to hide, come out now. Come out of the throat. Come out of the belly. Come out of the spine. Every snake unravel now. Uncoil now in the name of Jesus. Uncoil from around the spine, from around the reproductive system, from around the private parts, from around the head, from around the neck. Loose your hold now. Release now in the name of Jesus. Every demonic act that happened, I sever it now with the sword of the spirit in Jesus' name. I sever even the memories of it in Jesus' name. Out, every snake, out. I pull you out with the hand of God, with the finger of God. You are being pulled out right now in the name of Jesus. Go to the abyss. Every marine spirit, every spirit that came in through lesbianism, every spirit of perversion that twists the natural affections come up and out now in the name of Je Jesus. Jezebel, you and your chil children come out now, out now in the name of Jesus. Every spirit child, every night crawler, every howling demon, Go now in the name of Jesus. I evict you now in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare the anointing of the Holy Spirit is breaking every yoke, every chain right now, utterly destroying every yoke. I break every curse, every word curse ever spoken over the bloodline, over my bloodline, over me in the womb. I break it now in the name of Jesus. I break every curse from every witch, every warlock, every priest, every high priest, every high priestess that was ever spoken over me from any evil worker. I break it now in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I break every curse even spoken over me by family members and anyone else knowingly or ignorantly. I command every demon attached to them to come out now in the name of Jesus. Out of the back, out of the eyes, out of the ears, come out of the jaw, out of the private parts, out of the loins, out of the mind, out of the hands, out of the feet, every spirit that comes and holds me down. Come out in the name of Jesus. Leave me now and never return in Jesus' name. Go. Heavenly Father, I ask you to expose every demon. Expose every demon exposing itself as an angel of light, as the man or woman of their dreams. Expose it now in the name of Jesus. Every demon trying to disguise itself, come out now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I loose the peace of God over myself right now. I loose the delivering power of the Holy Ghost over me right now. I loose the joy of the Lord, the strength of God, the healing anointing, the healing balm of Gilead from the throne of God coming to me now in Jesus' name. Jesus is my healer. Jesus is my deliverer. Jesus is my savior. I call on the name of the Lord and he saves me even now in Jesus' name.
I seal this prayer in the blood of Jesus. Now I'm just going to pray to close out. Lord, I thank you for all you have done through this Zoom on this live and all that you are going to continue to do. I thank you that you are faithful and will complete the good work you began. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, we love you so much. I love you so much. Thank you for your love and your sacrifice. We honor you today and let our lives honor you each and every day. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I, I, I thank everybody for being on. This was part one of Spirit Spouses. Um, there will be a part two wrapping it up. But I believe that the Lord is going to be speaking to you and just making you aware, exposing anything that's hidden in the darkness, because that's what his word says. And he's faithful and true to his word. So just think of now that he's going to reveal things to you and trust in the name of the Lord. And if you sense or discern something, command it to leave. Go through the steps. Go back to the replay. If you forget the steps or if you weren't able to take notes. Go through the steps. Hold on to the freedom that you've received. The demon, because they, this is what they'll do. Once you've been delivered of something, they'll come back to you and try to convince you that they were never really gone, that they didn't leave. It's a lie. Just because one is speaking to you doesn't mean that they're in you. Doesn't mean that they're influencing you. You need to reject the lie. Take those thoughts captive. Demons can't read your mind, so you have to speak out to them, command them to leave. Command the mouth of the lion to be shut. So, again, I, it's 4.44. I love when I look at the time, it's 4.44. So it speaks to creative miracles and healing signs and wonders, which is the season that we're in. And I take it as a sign right now as well. You've been healed, delivered, redeemed by the blood of Jesus. And we just thank the Lord for it. And I'll see you next time. Amen.